communal fury at Delhi's doorstep. Haryana's Mewada up in flames. Five hour free run for communal villains. What you can see in Sona itself is that there has been uh, uh, there's been a heavy clash that's also resulted in these these local vendors shops being gutted down. Blaze singes smart city Gurugram as well. Shivuji ka mandir hai aur yahi par jo Ashobha yatra hai wo yahi par pahunchni thi aur tabhi jamkar hinsa honi shuru ho gayi. First hand reports on India Today. Tell you the full story. ये बस दीवार से लड़ी और ये पूरी दीवार देखिए ये टूट चुकी है थाले की दीवार और उसके बाद अंदर कितनी जबरदस्त तरीके से यहाँ पर पत्थरबाजी की गई है. It's the only channel with a detailed timeline. Haryana on the edge. Top focus on India today. One of the challenges of reporting a riot is how many claims and counterclaims, how much misinformation and fake news, how much information is out there to actually sift through. And that's the reason why India today does not compromise on facts. We send as many reporters as we possibly can to the ground. And that's the reason why we're in a position today on Five Live to not only unveil the villains of Haryana, but also tell you for the first time since the violence happened, the true timeline, the true triggers and those actually responsible. I'm Shiv, this is Five Live, these are the headlines. Home Minister Amit Shah tables Delhi Ordinance Bill in Lok Sabha amidst massive uproar. Congress and Trinamool call the bill unconstitutional. BJD and Jagan's YSRCP back the centre. Our Samvidhan has given this Sadhan to the whole society that Delhi Rajya has given Lok Sabha to take up no confidence motion debate from August the 8th to the 10th. That's three days. Prime Minister Modi to reply in Parliament on the last day. Modi and MCP Supremo Sharad Pawar share a dais in Pune. All smiles and handshakes and shoulder taps. Disquiet in opposition ranks over the meet. Congress hits the streets in protest. I'll be decoding this Kodak moment on Five Live today. BJP's Maha Gherao protest in Jaipur against the Ashok Gehlot government. BJP Kada hits the streets over a spate of crimes against women in Rajasthan. I'm going to be busting some what about free hypocrisy on the show as well. Chandrayaan 3 leaves Earth's orbit and heads to the moon. Chandrayaan 3 to enter moon's orbit on August the 5th. Touchdown on the surface of the moon on August the 23rd. Not some obscure or remote part of the country which would be just as bad, but to give you a sense of how close to many of your homes this is, these are the pictures of what happened yesterday and is continuing to happen in the new area, the Mewat region of Haryana adjoining Delhi. Gurugram, Nu, the Sona Chowk area are all parts of the larger national capital territory and they are literally on the outskirts of Delhi, and that is where this big eruption has taken place yesterday. It started yesterday at 10 a.m. when a VHP Bajrang Dal Shobha Yatra began. These are pictures at 10 a.m. yesterday when that Shobha Yatra began. You can see the saffron flags, VHP identity. They were to march towards 
a temple. So a Shobha Yatra is a, uh, you know, is a, 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 a crowd of devotees along with the VHP and the Bajrandal and they were headed towards a temple. At about 12 noon, two hours into this entire procession starting, stones began being pelted on the Yatra after a great deal of provocative sloganeering. This was in an area dominated by minority uh, uh, community families. Stone pelting erupted at about noon yesterday. These are images our cameras have captured of the stone pelting that began. Remember, many of the people in the crowd, in the procession, were also armed and pictures of those had also been shared on social media prior. At 4 p.m., about four hours after stone pelting began, clashes not only intensified, but they spread across new vehicles, police stations, shops, petrol pumps were all fair game. At last count, nearly 100 vehicles have been completely destroyed in fire. The landscape of Nu uh, captured on our cameras looked like, uh, you know, this huge hellscape of fires and smoke. And the damage that has been caused as a result of this clash is still being assessed at this point of time. It's going to run into many tens or even hundreds of crores. That's the kind of damage we're looking at. Police stations were attacked, vehicles were burnt as well. At about 5.30 p.m., as I was uh, you know, anchoring my show yesterday, at about 5.30 p.m. yesterday, the Haryana government took the call to suspend internet. Remember, this was about five and a half hours after the violence began, after the first stone was thrown, internet services was suspended at about 5.30 p.m., by which time crowds had already descended on this area, the clashes had intensified and had spread from Nu to other areas, including the Sona Chowk area and Gurugram. Remember, Gurugram, one of uh, Delhi's biggest suburbs, it's part of Haryana and is a smart city where many multinational corpora corporations and companies have their headquarters. July 31st, 6 p.m., yesterday at 6 p.m., the violence then spread, like I said, to Gurugram. So it was in the evening hours that the violence which had been erupting in Nu spread to Gurugram. So 10 a.m. the procession starts, 6 p.m. yesterday evening things then spread to, uh, to, to, to Gurugram. Late at night, late at night things became even scarier. After we reported at about 10 p.m. about the deaths of two uh, home guards, Haryana home guards, Jawans uh, in, the, in, in the clashes that took place, Late at night, a cleric, the imam of uh, an under-construction mosque in Gurugram also uh, uh, died in the clashes that took place. This happened late at night. We reported it first thing this morning. So that is a broad timeline of how things started from 10 a.m. to late last night with the internet being snapped and that snapping uh, and the dropping of uh, 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 any assembly of crowds in that area is still very much uh, in, in, in effect. Let's take you through the top developments coming in from violence hit Nu because that is really the epicenter of where things are happening. The, the tensions over there are really bad. This is what things looked like yesterday. I must tell you that things are calmer today as a result of deployment of forces. Three people were killed and at least 20 others injured. That death toll has gone up now to five overnight. Two policemen, uh, uh, two uh, Javans of the, of the Home Guard have died. Several policemen have been injured. The mob apparently tried to stop the VHP rally in a minority-dominated area. There had been a great deal of social media provocation before the procession began from both sides. Locals in Nu are agitated about the police not taking action on time. Nu's cybercrime police station was attacked by rioters and vehicles were set on fire. They looted the police bus, broke into walls of the police station as well. Massive damage to police property in Haryana. It all started initially in Nu, and this is what it looked like, almost apocalyptic levels of violence. Gurugram is where things uh, got inflamed at about 6 p.m. yesterday. Uh, two communities clashed near Sona Road. An imam in an under-construction mosque was also killed. In an attack late last night, multiple vehicles and shops were also set ablaze. There are reports also of some looting that took place. The Haryana government, like I said, has issued prohibitory orders in Nu, Gurugram and Faridabad. Schools, colleges, educational institutions of any kind, coaching centers are all shut today. Uh, and even though we don't know yet, they are likely to remain shut tomorrow as well. We'll update you on that information in just a bit. Well, in the wake of this intense communal flashpoint, Haryana Chief Minister M.L. Khattar has appealed for peace and harmony. A peace committee has also been set up to bring things to normalcy, but that's going to take 
a while. And we are putting out the names of the five persons deceased in uh, the violence that erupted uh, in New yesterday, in New Haryana yesterday. Uh, Neeraj is victim number one. He's a Jawan from the Haryana Home Guard. Guru Sevak is a Jawan from the Home Guard. Shakti, a 35-year-old uh, shop owner who had escaped his shop when the clashes started later at night. He had returned to close his shop. He was found dead inside the shop in the morning. That post-mortem uh, is awaited. Abhishek, a resident of Panipat, member of the VHP, 24 years old, was brought dead uh, to the Nalhar Medical College. And the Maulana of the Sector 57 Masjid in Gurugram has also been found dead. So five, uh, five Indian citizens have died as a result of this communal flashpoint that erupted in Nu and spread to Sona and Gurugram. I want to go across to India today's uh, Shreya Chatterjee, who's been uh, in the epicenter of this rioting overnight and she's still there right now reporting bravely for us uh, the five names that you've just put out uh, Shreya uh, can you give us you know uh, any information about the circumstances in which they died was it uh, you know in the rioting the stone pelting was there firing that took place just describe each of these deaths and what we know about them Uh, well, Shiv, uh, the two home guards uh, whose name we've put out, uh, they were actually part of the Gurugram police team which was on their way to NU when extra resources were actually sought by uh, the NU police department. They came under heavy stone pelting. Both of them succumbed to uh, their injuries. Uh, when we talk about Shakti, his post-mortem is still awaited. He's a shop owner in Berkeley, which is one of the regions in NU. He had actually gone back to close his shop. Uh, the locals suggest that he was beaten to death, but we are yet to uh, receive the post-mortem details. When we talk about Abhishek, he was part of the rally. He was a VHP member. Uh, he was also attacked. Uh, we do know that stone pelting is something that the entire rally had actually faced when they were passing the stretch of uh, the bus stand and the Tiranga Chowk of Nu. And when we talk about the Maulana, he was unfortunately uh, inside the masjid that was actually attacked by mm. miscreants uh, where he uh, was killed. Shreya, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, information doing the rounds, uh, very difficult to verify because there's such an angry war of claims and counterclaims in this very emotional, emotive time, uh, you know, suggesting that there was a social media build up to yesterday's flashpoint, you know, provocations had been taking place on, on Facebook and Instagram, etc. Uh, anything you can share with us about that? Because it seemed like, uh, you know, both sides, if I may call it that, they're all Indians, but both sides, uh, you know, had already been ratcheting up the, you know, temperatures before what happened. Well, absolutely, Shiv. If I can name a few, we did see Monu Manesar, who is a killer. He is absconding in the Bharatpur case. He was putting out videos that he will be part of the VHP rally somewhere down the line uh, trying to instigate uh, the matter. Yeah. Now, when we talk to the response, we've seen multiple uh, YouTubers from the region of Mewat. Uh, some names I can name, like Mewati YouTuber, etc. They had suggested that if you come, we will give you a response. And that's exactly what has happened. But one another point, you know, uh, Shiv, that I want to raise because uh, the cyber police station that came under attack, we cannot ignore that. That yeah. was deliberately done because recently the new uh, region has actually done a heavy crackdown against cyber thugs. Mewat is a hotspot of cyber thugs. Somewhere there was also a revenge that was actually taken on the police. So it was a collective thing altogether. We cannot deny the police failure as well. But indeed, there was a lot of communal tension that was existing on social media, which probably shouldn't have been overlooked. And that investigation is going to be a very difficult one because of all those angles that Shreya has put out. Shreya, stay safe. We'll keep coming back to you. Thanks very much for that live update from the ground. Haryana's new, the epicenter of this absolutely terrible, terrifying violence that has taken the lives of five Indians. This communal violence in the region has rocked the entire state. There's tension in the air. As you can imagine, it's not just limited uh, to Delhi's doorstep. Two police... And three civilians shot dead and about a dozen injured as stones were pelted. Cars set on fire during a religious procession being led by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad. The clashes erupted after a group of people, like we've told you in that timeline, began to pelt stones. Brandished guns and fired at vehicles of VHP workers near the Nalhar Mahadev temple in Nu in Mewat. That is the temple in which 
Hundreds of devotees were then stranded. The violence broke out over reports of cow vigilante and Bhivani lynching accused Monu Manesar visiting Nu and participating in that VHP procession. Haryana Home Minister Anil Vid states that members of the VHP took out the Yatra after getting due permission from the police. Was that in itself a possible lapse, keeping in view the mood on the ground? Or is it a case of why shouldn't permission be allowed? Shouldn't law and order be the least thing expected? Further asserting that police teams from nearby districts were deployed, and not just that, they were airdropped to the places where roads were blocked. But what of the Haryana government's own negligence and dereliction of duty should be a part of this investigation. मेवात में फिलहाल किस तरह के हालात हैं ये जानने के लिए हमारे साथ एसपी फिलहाल नू हैं और डीसी प्रशांत जी हैं हम सीधे बात करते हैं सबसे पहले डीसी साहब क्या मौजूदा स्थिति है मेवात ये सिचुएशन अभी अंडर कंट्रोल है जी पहला मिलिट्री फोर्सेस की तेरा कंपनी आ चुकी हैं छह और आ रही हैं अभी मैं और एसपी साहब जो हैं फ्लैग मार्च के लिए निकल रहे हैं तो सिचुएशन फिलहाल कंट्रोल में है कर्फ्यू लगा हुआ है और सारी सिचुएशन का मुआना हम रखे हैं समयबद्ध तरीके से सर एसपी साहब क्या कितने लोगों की कैजुअलिटी है अब तक कितने लोगों की अब तक तीन लोगों की कैजुअलिटी इसमें आई है दो हमारे फोर्स के मेंबर शहीद हुए हैं एक सिविलियन इसमें हुआ है शहीद हुआ है और बाकी पचास के आसपास लोग इसमें इंजर्ड हैं कितनी गाड़ियों को आग के हवाले कर दिया गया करीब हंड्रेड इसमें गाड़ियों का नुकसान हुआ है हंड्रेड गाड़ियों का नुकसान हुआ सर क्या जो इंजर्ड है उनको गन इंजरी भी है गोली भी लगी है नहीं जो इंजर्ड है फिलहाल वो भी कोई खतरे में नहीं जी माइनर इंजरीज हैं जो तीन सीरियस पेशेंट्स थे वो हमने फर्दर रेफर कर दिए पीजे तक में कुछ गुड़गांव में अपना इलाज करा रहे हैं तो एज सच जो भी फिलहाल इंजर्ड है उसमें कोई सीरियसली इंजर्ड नहीं है सर एक सवाल ये भी उठ रहा है क्योंकि जो स्थानीय प्रशासन है उसको जानकारी थी कि ये सेंसिटिव इलाका है और अगर शोभा यात्रा यहाँ पर निकलती है तो माहौल खराब हो सकता है तो एक तो परमिशन किस आधार पर दी गई और क्या जब परमिशन दी गई तो सुरक्षा व्यवस्था पर्याप्त थी क्योंकि वी जो हिंदू संगठन के लोग हैं वो भी सवाल उठा देखिए ये शोभा यात्रा जो है हर साल निकाली जाती है तो ऐसा कोई वो नहीं था बाकी जो है सभी ड्यूटियां इसमें जो अधिकारी कर्मचारी सभी की ड्यूटियां लगी हुई थी ये कितना फ्लेयर अप हुआ किस तरीके से फ्लेयर फ्लेयर अप हुआ उसकी हम जांच कर रहे हैं और जो भी इसमें किसी की अगर कोताही मिलती है तो हम उस पर कार्रवाई क्या जांच के लिए कोई कमेटी बनाई गई है ये अभी हम लोकल स्तर पे कर रहे हैं अगर सरकार की तरफ से कुछ दिशा निर्देश आएंगे तो उनका ही पालन करेंगे दो होम गार्ड है उनकी मौत हुई एक सिविलियन की मौत हुई वो मौत कैसे हुई है क्या गोली लगने से जी इसमें जो मृत्यु हुई है वो पथराव में सीरियस इंजरीज की वजह से हुई है गोली लगने से नहीं हुई है जो एक गुड़गांव की टीम के इंस्पेक्टर है उनको गोली लगी है मोनू मनेश्वर की बात करें तो वो सोशल मीडिया पर 27 जुलाई को उसने वीडियो वायरल किया था कि मैं आऊंगा तो प्रशासन ने क्या कोई एक्शन लिया किसी तरह का मोनू मनेश्वर के खिलाफ जैसा कि मेरे साथ ही नरेंद्र ने बताया कि सोशल मीडिया पे जिस प्रकार के जो वीडियोस वगैरह चल रहे थे तो इंटेलिजेंस की इनपुट के हिसाब से ही सारी जो है व्यवस्था की गई थी जो इन्होंने बताया कि नाकों पे पुलिस लगाई गई थी लंबा रूट था लंबे रूट पे अब ड्यूटी मजिस्ट्रेट्स और सारी व्यवस्था की गई थी और किस तरह से एक जगह पर जो है फ्लेयरअप हुआ उसके कारण ये टेंशन बिल्डअप हुई और सारी व्यवस्था उस उस एक उस फ्लेयरिंग अप से बढ़ी मोनू मानेसर को डिटेन क्यों नहीं किया फिर पुलिस ने जब अगर ऐसा था जो उसके खिलाफ जो भी राजस्थान का केस चल रहा है उसमें राजस्थान पुलिस को भी सूचित वो भी उनकी भी टीम लगी हुई थी और उनकी टीम है जो भी एज पर लो उसके खिलाफ जो कार्रवाई बनती है जो भी उनकी जांच में उनके साथ तथ्य आएंगे उनके खिलाफ डेफिनेटली राजस्थान पुलिस कार्रवाई करेगी उनके पुलिस और प्रशासन के साथ डायरेक्ट में यहाँ से हम लोग टच में है हमारे साथ हरियाणा पुलिस में तैनात एस पप्पू जी जुड़ गए हैं कल आप देख सकते हैं कि कैसे इनके सर में चोट लगी है जब पत्थराव हुआ था उनमें सर में चोट लगने के तहत इनको बहुत ही बुरी तरीके से घायल होना पड़ा है और अभी ये थोड़ी देर पहले अस्पताल से डिस्चार्ज हुए सर बताइए क्या कल पत्थराव हुए थे उसमें चोट लग गई थी तिरंगा पार्क चौक पर तिरंगा पार्क कितने लोग थे कम से कम काफी सारे लोग थे सारे लोग थे और आप लोग ड्यूटी पे तैनात थे तो शुरुआत कैसे हुई इससे पहले तो शोभा यात्रा नॉर्मल ही चल रही थी हाँ वो नॉर्मल चल रही थी एकदम जैसे भीड़ हुई और पत्थराव शुरू हो गए थे पत्थराव किस तरफ से पहले शुरू हुआ था आप लोगों ने देखा था और क्यों पत्थराव शुरू हुआ था कोई कारण था या ऐसे ही लोग ऐसे ही पहले जैसे ये बदरंग दल वाले निकल रहे थे उसके बाद एकदम ये निकलना शुरू हुए मोमजन और उन्होंने एक रैली से निकालनी शुरू कर दी ये कहाँ से शुरुआत हुई ये नो सिटी से हुई नो से कौन सी जगह से अगर आप ये बस स्टैंड के पास से बस स्टैंड के पास से उसके बाद 
आप थे बस स्टैंड से कितने दूर जहाँ पे आपको इतनी बुरी तरीके से लगी नहीं हमारे को तो फिर बाद में लग गया था जहाँ तिरंगा पार्क वो था हाँ। जो बदरंग दल वाले आ रहे थे वापिस हाँ। जाने के लिए हाँ। उस टाइम कितने बजे के आस पास ये चार साढ़े चार बजे का पत्थर लगने की वजह से हुआ दिखा के दिखाएं एक बार अब कैमरे में एक बार दिखाएं कि कितनी बुरी तरीके से ये घायल हुए हैं और अभी बस अस्पताल से ये डिस्चार्ज हुए आप देख सकते हैं कि इनकी पूरे शरीर में अभी भी खून की निशान है और ये अपनी ड्यूटी पे थे ऐसे किसी पे पत्थर बरसाना ये किसी भी तरीके से सही नहीं है ड्यूटी पे तैनात पुलिस ऑफिसर पे पत्थराव हुआ और आप देख सकते हैं कि कैसे इनको चोट लगी है पहले आपने कभी ऐसा देखा है नहीं नहीं ऐसे नहीं पहली बार देखा है कोई और भी पुलिसकर्मी थे आप लोगों के साथ हाँ काफी हमारे साथ थे एहतियात के तौर पर वहाँ कर्फ्यू लगाया गया है कुछ जिलों में एक धारा भी लगाई गई है सारी नज़र रखी जा रही है जो लोग इस षडयंत्र में नूह से बाहर के भी शामिल हुए हैं उनको निश्चरूप से पहचान करके उनके खिलाफ कार्रवाई की जाएगी अभी तक सब मिलाकर 44 के आसपास एफ हुई हैं और 70 लोगों के खिलाफ अभी नामजद उनको किया गया है उनको हिरासत में लिया गया है छानबीन के बाद जो भी दोषी लोग होंगे उनके खिलाफ सख्त कार्रवाई की जाएगी किसी भी उपद्रवी को बख्शा नहीं जाएगा Let's no let's make no mistake viewer the Haryana police has been caught asleep it's been sleeping at the wheel uh, you know all the actions that you just heard ML Khattar the chief minister list out have been taken after most of the damage has already been done but we will continue to report the facts in fact we put those questions to Haryana's home minister Anil Vij earlier today the only channel that's asking the tough questions here without the usual nonsensical political binaries take a look at Pooja Shali grilling the Haryana home minister मिस्टर विच किस तरह की तैयारी क्या प्रिपरेशन है कैसे लॉ एंड ऑर्डर वापस लाएंगे जिस तरह के विजुअल्स हम देख रहे हैं सर ये तो काफी खराब हालत लग रही है ना ही सिर्फ नू मेवात में बल्कि गुरुग्राम डिस्ट्रिक्ट तक आ गया है वायलेंस क्या आपकी सरकार कर रही है कि वापस सिचुएशन नॉर्मलाइज हो नहीं देखिए हमने सारे हरियाणा से फोर्सेज को और ऑफिसर्स को एसपी को वहां पर मूव किया है हमारे डीजीपी खुद वहां पर बैठ के सारा नियंत्रित कर रहे हैं हमारी एडीजीपी लॉ एंड ऑर्डर ममता सिंह ने खुद फोर्स को लीड करके जो मंदिर में लोगों को बंदी बना रखा था उनको जाकर उन्होंने छुड़वाया है हमने वहां पर इंटरनेट सेवाएं बंद कर दी हैं और मेवात में कर्फ्यू लगा दिया है क्योंकि सबसे पहला जो हमारा मोटिव है वो है वहां पर शांति करना और स्थिति को नियंत्रण में करना सर आपकी क्या इन्फॉर्मेशन है शुरुआत कहां से हुई एक शोभा यात्रा का कही जा रही है जो वीएचपी ने निकाली थी उस पर पथराव होता है लेकिन ऐसे किसी किसी रैली पे कैसे पथराव हो सकता है सर और क्या पहले क्यों नहीं प्रिकॉशनरी मेजर लिया गया अगर कोई एक कोई भी इंटेलिजेंस इनपुट था कि किसी तरह का कॉम्यूनल टेंशन हो सकता है आपके हिसाब से क्या इन्फॉर्मेशन पहली बार कोई पहली बार शोभा यात्रा निकाली गई हो ऐसी बात नहीं है हर साल निकलती है और शांतिपूर्ण तरीके से निकलती है परंतु जिस ढंग का ये हमला हुआ है और बवाल हुआ है लगता है किसी ने मास्टरमाइंड किया है वो हम फाइंड आउट करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं लेकिन अभी तो हम फोर्सेस वहां पर पहुंचा रहे हैं और स्थिति को पूरी तरह से कंट्रोल में रहे ऐसी हमारी कोशिश है हमने कर्फ्यू लगा दिया है सारे नूह में ताकि स्थिति को नियंत्रित किया जा सके सर क्या इंटरनेट सस्पेंशन और रिस्ट्रिक्शंस ऐसी कर्फ्यू जैसी या सेक्शन 144 गुरुग्राम डिस्ट्रिक्ट में भी लगाई गई है या अभी नू और मेवात तक ये सीमित है नहीं अभी कर्फ्यू नू में ही लगाया गया है बाकी सारी जगह पर हमने अलर्ट किया है और जो आजू बाजू के जिले हैं वहां पर भी अतिरिक्त फोर्स भेज रहे हैं हमें केंद्र से मैंने यूनियन होम मिनिस्टर से अजय भल्ला जी से खुद मैंने बात की थी और ही वॉज काइंड एनफ कि उन्होंने 20 कंपनियां हमें अलॉट कर दी और उसमें से कुछ कंपनियां वहां पर पहुंच गई हैं इवन एयर फोर्स को भी अलर्ट पर रखा गया था कि अगर दूर से कहीं से कंपनियां लानी हैं तो हम लाके दिल्ली उतार के और उनको जल्दी पहुंचाया जा सके 
सर हमारे जो रिपोर्टर्स हैं ऑन ग्राउंड चाहे वो नू में हो या गुरुग्राम डिस्ट्रिक्ट में हो सर उनका कहना है कि पुलिस डिप्लॉयमेंट बहुत हैवी भी नहीं है ऐसे वक्त में जिस तरह एक तरह से दंगा ही हो रहा है इसको उस तरह ही देखा जाएगा पुलिस डिप्लॉयमेंट और हैवी होनी चाहिए वो, वो शुरू में शुरू में जब यात्रा निकल रही थी तो रेगुलर जैसे इस कार्यक्रम में जितनी आवश्यकता होती है उतनी पुलिस थी वहां पर लेकिन जैसे ही ये दंगे की खबर आई मैंने खुद मॉनिटर किया सारा दिन बैठ के और हमने इधर उधर से साथ के लगते जिलों से फरीदाबाद से पलवल से गुड़गांव से झज्जर से रुड़की से हमने फोर्सेस वहां पर मूव की हैं और जल्दी उन फोर्सेस ने जाकर वहां पर स्थिति को अपने नियंत्रण में कर लिया था सबसे बड़ी समस्या हमें आ रही थी कि जो काफी बड़ी संख्या में लोग मंदिर में कैप्टिव रखे गए थे उनको छुड़ाने की आ रही थी तो हमारी एडीजीपी लैंड ऑर्डर ममता सिंह ने खुद फोर्स को लीड किया और जाकर उनको वहां से छुड़वाया सर लेकिन हमें बताइए शुरुआत कैसे हुई ऐसे कैसे पथराव एकदम हो जाता है क्योंकि एक एलिगेशन आ रही है जो मनु माने सर है जिसके अगेंस्ट मैं एक बार पूछ लू सर जिनके अगेंस्ट केस है वो था We should not rush to early conclusions. हम इसको find out करेंगे तथ्य सहित हम इसकी गहराई तक जाएंगे कि किसने करवाया किसने किया कैसे हुआ uh, We will try to find out everything. अनिल वैद जी हरियाणा में चुनाव होने वाले हैं कहीं ये चुनावी हिंसा जिस तरह से देखा जाए उसको क्या आप देखते हैं ये वो रंग भी है इसमें आ, क्या इलेक्शन से पहले ऐसा किसी तरह का कॉम्युनलाइज करने का किसी का एजेंडा आप देखते हैं अटेम्प्ट देखते हैं देखिए मैं इसको मैंने मैं कोई किसी बात को इतनी जल्दबाजी में नहीं कहूंगा हमारी एजेंसियों को फाइंड आउट कर लेने दीजिए हम आपसे सब शेयर करेंगे नाउ व्हेन कम्युनल क्लैशेस टेक प्लेस व्यूअर एंड दे हैपेंड फॉर आवर्स येस्टरडे एज सून एज फोर्सेस आर पोर्ड इन एज सून एज यू नो द रैपिड एक्शन फोर्स पुलिस एटसेट्रा कम इन टू प्ले things calm down but things never become normal because that takes many weeks if not months so therefore very uneasy tension has now descended or haryana's new the region was up in flames yesterday for over 6 hours after that procession passed through that area like i said five people have been killed several others are injured some of them even critically hopefully the death toll will not go up around 2500 people also took shelter inside a temple as a mob went on the rampage india today is the only channel on ground tracking the sequence of this escalation take a look at this deadly communal clashes rock haryana's loo guns brandished stones pelted vehicles set on fire communal hot spot new was up in flames on july 31st after stones were pelted at bhp's rally passing through muslim dominated area at least five deaths were reported and about a dozen others injured in unprecedented violence aap mere piche dekh sakte hain snow stone pelting patraav shuru ho chuka hai india today was the only channel on ground tracking the situation unfolding ये मेन हाईवे है लेकिन लोग इधर से जाने को मजबूर हैं वजह यह है कि इस पूरी रोड पर आप देख सकते हैं किस तरीके से आगजनी पत्थरबाजी और दंगे के निशान यहां पर मौजूद हैं। सोमवार के दिन जब इस इलाके में हंगामा हुआ जब तोड़फोड़ हुई जब पत्थरबाजी हुई जब आगजनी हुई तो क्या मंजर रहा होगा कितना डर का माहौल रहा होगा Around 2500 men, women and children took shelter at the temple when the riots broke out. I'll show you you know the kind of stones that you can also see that are lying down over here. Now uh, the temple primarily uh, hasn't uh, come under uh, attack is what we are told over here by those uh, who were there. Locals are up in arms with the police claiming the rioters had a 5 hour free run. The rioters even used a stolen bus to break into the cyber crime police station and vandalize the property. The police station had recently launched a crackdown against cyber crimes plotted in Mewat. 
Now, this is one of the walls of the cyber police station, which was actually barged in by this particular bus that you can see. What we are learning from the police uh, sources here on the ground, they tell us that these people uh, had actually looted this bus and subsequently they travelled in this bus and they barged in. After Monday's communal clash, curfew has been imposed in Nu and central forces have been deployed. तो इस तरह के तस्वीरें आपको दिखाई दे रही हैं धारा 144 लागू कर दी गई है इंटरनेट पूरी तरह से बंद कर दिया गया है पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस के जवान वो धीरे धीरे करके इस पूरे मेवात रीजन में पहुंच रहे हैं The violence of news spread to neighboring Gurugram the bustling millennium city and IT hub The clashes that erupted in Mewat Haryana had spread to Sona as well. As one travels to Nu, what you can see in Sona itself is that there has been uh, uh, there's been a heavy clash that's also resulted in these these local vendors shops being gutted down. We can see a cleric was killed when an under construction mosque was attacked in Gurugram. The dead also include two home guards and two civilians. The big question. Why did the Haryana cops fail to control the writing for several hours? With Shreya Chatiji, Arvind Ojha and Himanshu Mishra in Nu, Bureau Report, India Today. And here's the very latest we're getting from the ground by our brave team of reporters who are continuing to stay there and report all the facts as they see them first hand. There is a fresh... Uh, eruption in violence that has erupted in Gurugram on the outskirts of Delhi. This is uh, Delhi's biggest suburb in Haryana. Shops have been attacked and slogans raised in sector 66 of Gurugram. Let's go straight across uh, to Milan Sharma who's on the ground where this is happening. Milan, what, what can you tell us? Another eruption today in Gurugram over 24 hours after things began. Well, yes, Shiv, let me just show you in visuals. This uh, is clearly a revenge uh, for whatever has been happening in Mewat and Nu. It, it's a spillover into the city of Gurugram. I'm at Badshapur and this is also called Sector 66. Uh, but you can see that this is what remains of uh, the violence that erupted just, a, just one hour from right now. And uh, the police has, of course, cleared the area. But as you can see, that these are shops that belong to one particular community of people that have been targeted in the entire area. My camera person Ankit Khandelwal is trying to show you that all the vehicles, the bikes that have been overturned here, a mob of at least uh, uh, 50 to 60 people came in together and uh, created a ruckus in this entire area. You see bikes here because this particular uh, is a shop is a bike shop and next to it was a juice center and uh, whatever remains of uh, the violence here can clearly be seen. I'll also ask Ankit to show you that all the posters here have been torn off. Uh, all the names of one particular community from the posters have also been removed. And uh, these kind of sporadic uh, instances of violence have been happening in Gurugram, in the millennial city, which is hardly a distance away from Fortune 500 companies throughout the day in broad daylight. Uh, we see the police also on guard over here. We can see the police around here. Of course, they've been able to contain the violence for some time. But we're also getting reports, Shiv, of other violent incidences and mob incidences within ba uh, Badshapur and even inside Sector 66 at the moment. And let me show you that the entire area, the shops of the entire area have been asked to close. There's a PCR van on standby right now that is doing the rounds here. But all this could have been averted if Gurugram police would have placed their men at various strategic points where this uh, particular uh, targeting of uh, one community by the other and vice versa has been happening ever since Mewat. So where I'm standing, Shiv, we are just about 15 minutes from Cyber City. We are 15 minutes from Cyber Hub. We are about 15 minutes from all those places where there are big Fortune 500 and MNC offices. And this is completely unsafe for people. We've uh, 
seen uh, the uh, that the fact that a lot of people did not turn up to work today many were given work from home but there's been a large section of blue collared workers who were also told to clear out from this area so this is what remains of the violence here but as we go forward we'll see more of such instances that are happening inside in the entire uh, 66 sector which Milan, is Milan this is going to this is uh, going to scare people uh, of gurugram this is go, you know already schools and colleges are already shut you know they are going to feel very very nervous right now but even stepping out of their houses if it's happening in sector 66 you know what can you share with us about preparations how much deployment of police is there you know for this to happen over 24 hours after the eruption yesterday uh, seems like a lapse well shiv uh, the mosque that was burnt uh, that is being told and reportedly that one is in sector 57 which is not too far away from where i am standing right now that is something that the gurugram administration and the district administration has taken into cognizance they issued statements as well but uh, what the police sources are telling us that this seems as a retaliation of whatever has been happening in mewat and nu and that is the repercussion that people have to face in such areas these are uh, areas dominated by migrant population of course but as i said just 10 15 minutes from here is the millennium city gurugram so you take this stretch of road which goes straight all the way to the main city centers and the other side of the road straight away goes to sona i'll show you the police personnel is also on ground let me tell you but not as much as deployment one would have expected because a large chunk of the gurugram police was also deployed in nu mewat and sona districts and that's what we've been told by the police themselves okay. however yes there is a sense of fear in the public here and most of the people who go to offices here have left early for the day as we okay. have, as we've been told uh, and india today's reporters milan and her team will continue to update us the latest and most accurate information the only accurate information as a matter of fact will be here on india today no claims and counter claims only facts you'll see it on our main screen or you will see it on our ticker uh, about road closure schools and colleges offices all of that information will be first here on india today that is our personal guarantee milan stay safe thank you very much for joining me with that live update Four cases of gang rape have been reported in Rajasthan in just the last 24 hours. Out of these four cases, three cases of alleged gang rape have been filed this weekend alone in just Rajasthan's Alwar district. The state chief minister Ashok Gehlot has been under fire for increasing crimes against women that put uh, Rajasthan on the number two position in. previously available crimes against women data in alwar not very far from delhi two minor sisters were allegedly gang raped for 18 months the fir was filed over the weekend after their father discovered that both the minor girls 115 and 113 were pregnant another 17 year old school girl was allegedly kidnapped and gang raped by eight men the survivor a class 12 student was found by the police battered and bruised in barmer rajasthan another 15 year old dalit girl was allegedly gang raped when she was home alone her photos were splashed across whatsapp and social media the bjp today as you can see in these pictures hit the streets in protest against the gelot government who they blame for not engaging on this issue water cannons were used as protesters campaigned against alleged corruption atrocities against women crumbling law and order and unemployment remember rajasthan goes to the polls in just a few months from now this year vartaman ki sarkar jo balatkariyon ko sanrakshan deti hai vartaman ki sarkar jo bhrashtachariyon ko sanrakshan deti hai sampradayik taakaton ko pallavit poshit karti hai vartaman ki sarkar ashok gehlot saab ki sarkar जो महिलाओं का अपमान जो है उस पर मुख दर्शक बनी रहती है ये सरकार जो दलितों की बेटियों पर होते हुए अपमान को सहन करती है कभी एसिड से जलाया जाता है कभी पेशाब पिलाया जाता है इस तरह की घटनाओं पर जो सरकार मौन है और जिस सरकार का फोकस नहीं है राजस्थान की जनता ने यह तय कर लिया कि इसको उखाड़ करके फेंकना है राजस्थान के अंदर बेरोजगारी अपराध और भ्रष्टाचार ये चरम पर है और ये खाकी वर्दी के पीछे जो छुपे हुए अपराधी ये डंडे हमें मार रहे हैं सांसदों को भी डंडे पड़े हैं लेकिन हमें डंडों से डर नहीं लगता हम अपराधी नहीं बनना चाहते हम कल को पुलिस वालों को पकड़ेंगे तो हम अपराधी बनते हैं हम अपराधी नहीं बनना चाहते अपराधी पीछे छुपे हुए पुलिस वालों के पीछे छुपे बैठे हैं उस वाटर कैनन के पीछे छुपे बैठे हैं वो है अपराधी 
और अभी तो वो शुक्र मनाए कि साधारण जनता सड़क पर नहीं निकल रही थी तो लोकतंत्र नहीं इनको हाथ से पकड़ के बाहर निकाल सकती है हम लोकतंत्र से बाहर निकालेंगे व्यूअर इट वॉज दिस ट्वीट by me sharing a news article about a horrifying crime in Rajasthan that has gone viral two minors one aged 15 the other 13 had been gang raped in Alwar district and both were now found pregnant the 15 year old is 7.5 months pregnant and the younger girl is 2 and a half months pregnant the crimes were committed months ago but they're now part of a fearsome statistic in Rajasthan which has the dubious reputation of clocking the second highest number of crimes against women in 2022 just behind Uttar Pradesh in 2020 and 2021 Rajasthan was in the numero uno number one position in a list no state should want to be part of there have been four reported gang rapes in rajasthan in just the last 24 hours according to one report but if these crimes have been increasing for years surely there's a reason why these crimes are being especially amplified now of course there is two reasons actually one rajasthan is headed into an election in a few months from now law and order and crimes against women under chief minister ashok gehlot are being used as one of the bjp's calling cards just as it did in uttar pradesh last year the second reason is the one i wish to dwell on viewer for just a minute opposition parties have called the bjp's emphasis on sexual crimes in rajasthan an act of what aboutery to dilute and divert from the horrors of the manipur crimes that the ruling party the bjp is on the back foot at the center and is using offense as defense to counter attack the uninterrupted spotlight on crimes and horrors in manipur friends i'm very clear about what about free i've said it before here on the show i've taken bjp spokesperson to task on the issue of what about free as well as i've said right here before no crime can be condoned and manipur and rajasthan are very different in manipur crimes were committed in an emergency like situation under the darkness of an internet ban and came to light only much later with a cloud over the extent of similar horrors committed in the ethnic blood spilling of that northeastern state in rajasthan the cases have by and large been reported with police cases filed even if there have been lapses in timely action etc let me categorically say that what aboutery is totally unacceptable amidst this crossfire however between the bjp and the congress it is victims and survivors who suffer but i do want to point out that the outrage over what aboutery needs a closer look because in my view it is this outrage that gets off the hook amidst the indignation and rage the reason i say that is the congress which claims to stand for the safety of women simply does not say a word on an issue that couldn't possibly be more in your face in Rajasthan a woman mla of the congress government and party in Rajasthan wonders about her own safety in Rajasthan and yet the party is happy to cling to the what aboutery outrage wagon the congress is absolutely right about manipur there has been dereliction negligence incompetence that has led to the horrors in the state but does that give the congress a free pass to simply not engage with an issue that's burning right in front of it in Rajasthan or the Trinamool Congress to debate the Manipur issue and pass a resolution even while West Bengal sits at the number 4 position for 2022 in crimes against women just behind poll bound Madhya Pradesh let's be clear crimes against women must go down states should be competing to be lower on the national crime uh, report bureau's next list and without fixing the process of crime reporting and just as we shouldn't allow what about free to let the bjp to divert from the manipur issue we shouldn't allow what about free to give the rajasthan and west bengal governments safe passage from accountability and answers this may be a terrible thing to say but our political battlefield is now engaged in a war of my rapes versus your rapes and if there ever was a sign of a broken lost shattered political class It is this.